Well, hello, lovely listeners. And today it gives me the great honor to welcome Emily Miotto. Hopefully I've said that right. Um, she's nodding, great. Um, <laughs> Emily is a theta, you might say theta, healing practitioner, uh, a cosmic channeler, empathetic intuitive. Um, and she loves to provide wisdom, which is free from bias, judgment, and ego. Her mission is to provide others with the tools to embody self-mastery, understand themselves and escape the matrix. Hallelujah to that one, to, <laughs> live their, to live their most empowered and authentic life. She loves to speak all things spirituality, energy, the universe, um, and, you know, escaping the matrix and tapping into wisdom together. So welcome, Emily. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> cool. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued with what you do anyway. I, I'm a Reiki healer myself. Um, I don't do it as a, as a profession. I did it as something that was just in me. So I, 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 I attuned about nearly four years ago, I think it was. Um, it's only more recently that I've decided that perhaps I'm going to take that out and start doing more with it. Um, mm -hmm very much into the universe, very much into all of that. And uh, so, yeah, so over to you, Emily. And um, can you give us a little backstory about you and, um, and obviously how you got to doing what you're doing now? Yeah, so I actually grew up in a religious household. So it was completely opposite of what I'm into now. Yeah. And I was always wondering why. So many things just didn't make sense to me. And then when I was in university, my first year, I developed some sort of digestive issues that doctors couldn't explain it. One day, completely fine. The next day, it was just poof, gone. And I went to doctors. I went to um, like therapists and everything to try and figure out, well, why do I have this? It's not just deal with the symptoms. It may go away. It may not. Why, why did it be created? Why was it manifested into my reality? And so I started to look into more of the Eastern medicine and started going to a, a naturopathic doctor. I went to Chinese medicine, I got acupuncture, and then I came across theta healing in that practice. And from there, I got those spiritual goosebumps that said, this is the truth, follow it. And after one session, I was able to cure what was considered an incurable disease. I don't think I mentioned it, but it was celiac that I ended up being diagnosed with. Oh, okay, right. And I removed that from my, my manifested reality. After one session, I was able wow. to um, clear up sexual trauma from the past. And after that, I was, I was sold. I was like, this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. So, so, you, yeah. so you were Celia, which basically just came on like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and through, what is Celia? Because... I know a little bit, but not, not an awful lot. So what did that mean in your body? So it means that for celiac, you can't have any gluten because it tears off the, the little villi in your intestines and it caused a lot of inflammation. I ended up creating a lot of other allergies to foods that like blueberries and bananas and just a whole long list of all the foods that I couldn't eat because what happens is that it kind of like opens up your intestines in a way that just fluids end up mixing between each other. So many issues. Anyways, it manifested in my body is a lot of inflammation, a lot of bloating, a lot of pain, incredible amounts of pain that again, doctors just said, you're going to have to just deal with it. It may go away here, take some laxatives, put me on laxatives for a year. And again, I was always asking the question of but why? why is this happening to my body? I was completely healthy. I grew up in a household. I had a, my mom, it was a dental hygienist. So she's like, no candy, no junk food, worked out. It was great. I went to school for food and nutrition. So I was eating healthy and I don't know what happened until I found out that through the healing that it also had to deal with the energy of the sexual trauma that was connected to it, that because I hadn't addressed it, it had suppressed and become stagnant in my body in that area of my body. Wow. So you mentioned acupuncture as well, which is something that I, I did for many years. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm only probably not doing it now because my practitioner has sort of moved on to other therapies like color mm -hmm. healing and all of that sort of thing. 
Um, but yeah, I loved, I mean, most a lot of people are like, well, why do you want needles sticking in you? But it's not, that is it. I mean, I had a lot of talking in my sessions. Uh -huh. um, so I can relate to the acupuncture. But, so, so you did that, did that help? Or did that just get your awareness to the next stage? It helped with the symptoms. And I was actually introduced more to the spiritual realm through my practitioner. She actually gave me the book to read. I think it's um, Dark Isn't Black Is a New Light. I think it is what it's called. I'm not entirely sure, but it was an amazing book that kind of opened up my eyes to, oh my gosh, this is why all these things are happening. It's not just that my body is going to be like this way for the rest of my life, because I started doing research of how can I calm my body down? I'm in this fight or flight mode. How can I calm my body down? She introduced me to meditation. So I started doing that and noticing the symptoms were really beginning to improve, but it still didn't answer the question of well, why was it created in the first place? Mm. So that's what kind of kept me on that search to, I want to know why I got to find that bottom reason why this was now manifested. So you found Theta Healing and you said in one session. So can you give us a bit of an idea of what that session looked like? Yeah, so in Theta Healing, there are three primary, kind of like a triangle as I see it. There's meditation, witnessing, and intention. So the beautiful part about it is, is that it feels like you're in a meditation the whole time. And through this meditation, the practitioner alters your brainwave state. So now you're vibrating at the Theta brainwave state. And this is where your access to the subconscious mind, where you hold all of these traumas and wounds from the past, whether it was, if you believe in past lives, it can also be from your past lives. It can be from your ancestors. But with this, you're able to trace back the moment which you instilled a certain belief. So when we do this thing called digging work, we find that bottom belief that created your physical manifestation, whether it was any disease, whether it was, for example, lack of money, whatever it could be your physical reality right now. And usually it happens between the ages of zero and seven. So by digging back to that time period, through witnessing, you actually get to pull and remove that belief and reprogram it with a belief that now is going to serve you in your current life, rather than the energy and the beliefs that you're living out of based on what you thought would keep you safe as a kid. And through muscle testing, which is a powerful practice that I love to do even in my daily life is you get to see that after the removal of the belief your body actually sways a different way because the body is the subconscious mind so by simply removing the belief your body then has to sway in a different direction and that kind of reaffirms that this belief was actually changed instantly and then yeah it's just through meditation and when you say your body sways in a different way so um the kinesthetic stuff um so yeah so I, I don't know a few years ago somebody introduced me to ask yourself you know do I want to eat that piece of cheese mm -hmm. and, if you, and if your body goes forward it's a yes if it goes back it's a no is that what you mean yeah that's exactly what I mean so when I do the testing for my clients we'll find okay maybe the bottom belief is I am unworthy of love and your body will sway forward then we do the actual healing work and we ask the question again and your body sways back. And the beauty of it is that you can't force it, right? Your body is just, you literally at that point have no control, no matter how much you want to push it forward or push it back, it can't lie, right? The body doesn't lie. So witnessing that allows the client to see that the belief has actually changed to reinforce it in the mind, again, coming down back to beliefs. And is this, it sounds um, a little bit similar to RTT in as much as, do you know RTT, the Rapid Transformational Therapy? Um, so that's something- Maybe you've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, so that's something I've actually done quite recently. Um, and it was a similar thing, finding those, so there's usually two or three things that come up and it's taking you back to that root time of when that came up and whether that's in this life or a past life or whatever, or even in the womb. So mm -hmm. it sounds, it sounds very similar. And I did find it really powerful. I mean, the stuff that was coming out of my mouth, I was like, where the hell did that come from? You know? Um, yeah. So it sounds similar. It does, do you think? Yeah, I believe it definitely is similar. If it's working with the subconscious mind, then it most likely is. 
Um, and that's the beauty of it is that when working with the subconscious mind, you have no idea what's going to come out, especially if it's been something that's traumatic, that there's your survival self is kind of blocking you from remembering. But in that state, you're able to access all these memories that maybe you did block out, which is so powerful. So yeah, it's definitely similar to that kind of therapy. Is there a bit of a risk you just mentioned then about unlocking memories that you hadn't have, you know, remembered? And obviously there are people that have purposely decided they don't want to remember certain things. Um, is there a, is there a, uh, what's the word? Uh, oh my God, my, my, my brain's gone black. <laughs> but is there a, is there um, a, a, a risk? Possible? Yeah, risk, there we go, thank you. Um, <laughs> that you can open up Pandora's box and create problems for the person? So when I do the work, it's not necessarily me doing it. It's me witnessing the healing being done from the energy of creation. And we can use the word God, source energy, universe, whatever it wants to be. However, everybody who comes to me, it's almost in knowing because I do give that um, right at the beginning that, okay, we are going to be opening up things that you may have suppressed. However, with that awareness, that is also your greatest power, right? One of the things and practices that I do is I remove all the shock, trauma, and free-floating thoughts that are connected to that experience once it is opened. Because when we are working with, like everything is energy. So when we're working with this energy, it's the emotional attachments that we've created with those beliefs that keep us locked into reliving the past over and over again, or trying to shut it out because that emotional attachment is so painful. So by removing all the shock, trauma, and free-floating thoughts, then you're able to observe that experience when you go back to it rather than reliving it. I think that's the biggest difference that I've noticed for my clients is that it's in always connecting with your highest self and watching as the little Emily is experiencing this rather than being back in that experience where maybe you had sexual trauma or abuse or abandonment or whatever that energy was. Okay, thank you. Um, so you had one session and you were healed. You literally, your body was normal again. Yeah, I went into the session and it was really interesting because after the first session, my body went into, sorry, not after, before the session, my body went into fight or flight mode. I was starting to get sick. I was vomiting. And it was like my survival self was saying, I don't want to get rid of this. I want to keep this here because I'm so used to it. And I told my practitioner this, like, I feel sick. I don't know if I can come in. And I'd actually canceled the first session. And the second time it came up, I was like, okay, why is this happening? I was fine the whole day. And literally an hour before I get sick to the point where I don't want to go. And my practitioner had told me at that time that, Emily, you are wanting to keep this because it is so safe now. So through that, I now I'm like, okay, I can go into sessions and I'm welcoming the healing, right? It was, and even after healing that first time, you always find more deeper and deeper levels because what I ended up coming out to was, I think it was a belief that I am unlovable or I am not good enough. So what happens is that when I created that, when I was probably around five or something that I opened up a whole archive of all the other experiences that added on top of that so every time I do theta healing on myself it's especially if I am triggered I have to find out and pull all those different archives that you're not good enough in school let's work on this energy coming always back to that bottom belief so yes I healed myself but there are always multiple layers that I've been able to explore and dive into to continue to resolve if not improve my health does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so have you always done this or were you doing something before this and then obviously having been through that process yourself, you decided to then become a, a practitioner yourself. So were you doing things beforehand? No, I, I was always in this energy that I want to help people. I want to be able to work in healing others. And I found out for me, it was part of a past life, which is interesting, but I started off with the food nutrition. So I wanted to be a holistic nutritionist. And then I went into personal training and I thought, okay, I'd help people in that way. And I just wasn't fulfilled and I wasn't satisfied. And it got to the point where I was, my body was physically rejecting personal training and being at that 
environment that I would again get sick and my body is like no we're staying home and once I found theta healing I started saying okay I'm going to take the course I'm going to start practicing I started healing myself and practicing on my friends and family because I just I loved how powerful it was and I was thinking oh my gosh I can help so many people with this as long as you reprogram well now you get to attract more abundance attract more love be healthy and that again, I was just kind of guided by creator of like, this is your path. And I, everything just lined up for me to be able to do this for a profession. Mm. So how long have you been doing it now? Three and a half years. Cool. And do you have a, an ideal client? How do you, how do people find you? You know, how do you attract these people? I would like to say I know how, but the universe just brings me people that need my help. So I am on social media. So I obviously do talk about the practices of reprogramming the mind on social media, but for a large part of the time, it's people who will end up coming on a call with me and saying, I don't know how I found you, but I'm just going to go with it. And then they find out that it was so powerful and beneficial. I've, I've had people refer them friends and family to me um but yeah the universe just kind of brings the people who need the healing to me at whatever time they need the healing that's the best way I can describe it well that's amazing you know that's (laughs) that's ultimate manifestation isn't it um and and you talk about you know uh the matrix and wisdom so can you talk a little bit more into that what that sort of means for you yeah so through this work I've been able to find a lot of those old programmings that we have grown up with that we have to for example go to school get a job get married buy a house retire and that's it the rules that we have unconsciously ingrained within ourselves in order to fit into society and we can see based on this global event that has happened that we are very much indoctrinated with what we feel we have to do and it all comes around this energy of fear fear has been the overarching energy for the past two years since this global event as I like to say it and when we are in this fear we are so much more um, vulnerable so much more um, easily persuaded and we then don't have any power. We don't know how to reclaim our power because all we are trying to do in our survival self is just keep us safe, right? We're put in this fight or flight mode and we're consistently staying there that we're going to listen to whoever and whatever is going to bring us back to any real or imagined idea of safety. So the work that I do, it allows you to free yourself from that fear right? It's not the fear that you experience right now. It's the fear that that little two-year-old, five-year-old, seven-year-old hasn't addressed yet and is living out of. So when a fear is triggered in your present day, whether you are 25 or whether you are 60, if a fear has come up, for example, of I'm going to die, then that is not you. Because if you know that you have the ability to heal yourself and your body has the ability to fight something off, based on a belief, then you can do so. If you and that little child of you, maybe your parents said growing up that, or the overarching energy was everybody is sick, I'm scared of dying. And so you ingrained that as, I don't wanna talk about death. I lost maybe a family member and you have that fear. Then when it's triggered now in your 28 year old life, again, you're living out of that old programming. So by reprogramming the mind, you free yourself from, anything external from you that therefore has power over you and reclaiming your power to say, well, I believe this. I know that no matter if a doctor tells me I have cancer and I'm going to die in six months, for example, I have the ability to change that based on my belief and based on my energy that no, I choose to live and I'm going to heal myself. I feel like that was a very long rant. I could talk about this for so long, but it's just in freeing everybody from those old outdated programmings that they don't even notice are habitually running in the back of their mind. So therefore they get to consciously choose what they want to believe in. Yeah, I, I get that. And, and how does that work? So 
so I get the, you know, the fear of death and all the rest of it. And, but how does that work? Like you call it this global event. And it's not so much about disease within the body. It's about the threat of external people um, threatening your safety. So is it, this, is it the same thing? You know, cause I can't control him as much as he's trying to control me. Mm -hmm. um, so how does that work in terms of feeling that safety back in the system when you, you know, when you have this perception of all these people out there that, you know, Dr. Evil or whatever, you know, how does it work? So the work that I have been doing both with my clients and myself is the idea that if something else has the ability to make you feel or act in any way, that means that you don't have that within yourself. And it can go with, let's do something a little bit lighter. So for example, love. If my partner says something to me, then I feel upset or I feel hurt. That person made me feel hurt, right? But that person can't make you do anything unless you have that limiting belief that was triggered or have that energy that was triggered that said, well, I need this person to make me feel loved. And because they didn't do something, now I don't feel loved. So if we use that now with the global event of, yes, that person can be sick, that person can choose to do or not do something that's going to possibly affect somebody else. But I also know that my immune system is strong enough to fight off anything, right? It's, the, it's when it's brought into our awareness that this is a possibility, if you accept that belief, well, now your cells and tissues are going to respond to that belief. So for example, right at the beginning of this global event, we didn't know much about it. There were probably many, many people who were sick, but we didn't think, oh, they can actually give it to us or, oh, if we have this, we are going to die. So these people went around, some of them did end up passing away, nothing to do with the actual, that certain energy, but just because they had certain beliefs and some people got completely better. Once it was brought into our awareness, and again, now it's being indoctrinated and instilled within us that if you have this, you will die. If you don't have something, you will spread it to other people. That now we're being reinforced and it's working into our subconscious that this is a belief. But knowing that, okay, so I can heal myself. My body knows how to heal itself. If I get sick, I also know that I'm going to get better because my immune system is strong enough. So whatever the external world is portraying, it doesn't have any power over me. And that's how you can reclaim your power through changing the beliefs that everybody else can be completely set, but I choose to stay healthy. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. I, I suppose my mind's going off in all sorts of places. Um, <laughs> Great, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> so I know I did my job. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did um, a podcast interview earlier today with another guy that um, he, he's, it's all about, expectations and um improv and how the rules of improv um should be used every day and you know blah 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 and and we got on to um the conversation about what's going on in the world really and because i said you know when you've got such a massive thing those expectations get even more inflamed if you like because not only have you got the you know the basic expectations that we've always had Mm -hmm. We've now got this polarization of, of you know, and, and divisiveness, which is now playing a part. Not, not only have we got the little expectations, but we've got the massive expectations because actually he doesn't agree with me. You know, we're sitting on two sides of, of um, the, the opinion mm -hmm. and, you know, and yeah, would I rather be right? Would I rather be happy? I'd rather be happy. However, when it's something so massive and it's so polarizing, and there's one camp that are going, how can you not see what's going on? And the other camp that are going, let's just follow the guidelines. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's, that's where I'm coming from in as much as the work that you're doing, I get it and I love it. Would you expect those, I'm just going to follow the guidelines people <laughs> to come to you or is it, is, is it generally people that are, you know, obviously spiritual, obviously believe that we're all energy, et cetera, et cetera, and, and obviously have traumas that they want to get rid of. Um, I suppose what I'm asking is in a really bad way, 
those <laughs> those people uh, that are sitting on the other side of the fence, would you help them? Would you be able to help them in the same way if they're so, you know, if they're so believe that what they're being told is the truth from the mainstream? Honestly, it, it would depend on if they were open to help. Right? Yeah. It's the same way as you can't help anybody unless they want that help. Majority of the people who do come to me are more open to exploring themselves and escaping the matrix in a sense. I have had some clients that are more in the let's follow the rules to stay safe, but there is a lot more resistance. Because again, it's, and this is why that polarity has kind of happened now, is because on both ends, especially the ends that want to follow the rules, it's their identity has become so ingrained with this that the possibility of it not being the ultimate truth, it triggers again that bottom belief within them that their whole identity is now going to be dismantled. So I have to stay, no matter if on some level I believe that it may not be the truth. I have to stay with this point to allow me to feel again, that safety. So yeah, I, I would be open to helping everybody. If I can, I, I want to be able to help everybody to see more of this truth. However, I also know that it is the truth for everybody, right? It depends on like, for example, if somebody is colorblind, the truth for them is that everything's black and white. But if I see in color, the truth is for me that everything is in color. So it's all, they're all possible truths. Yeah. And I think that is the biggest thing to know that there is all possible truths. Anything is possible. So when someone says, well, you will die if you do get some sort of sickness, I'm trying to avoid certain words. If you do get some sort of sickness, you will die. Well, yes, that is true. Yeah. In one aspect, in one of the areas in the doorways of the quantum field, that is possible. But there's also the possibility that you can heal. So which one do you choose? Mm. Again, it comes back to you have that choice. No matter if everybody else is sick, no matter if everybody else is telling you that you were going to get sick or that you are making me sick by not doing something. Well, now it's saying, well, now I have all the power over you. So why do you choose to accept the fact that I have power on my choices on how you are going to heal? Right, because now that's accepting that that truth for them that everybody else is making me sick. And again, you can trace that back down to certain beliefs from your childhood, maybe saying, I'm not empowered. I'm not good enough to heal. I'm not good enough to say what I want to say or be believe what I want to believe. It comes down to that childhood belief. So in reprogramming it, now you can set yourself free and reclaim that power to say, I choose a reality that I want to see, regardless of what anyone else sees. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you're talking my language. Um Love so, it. <laughs> talk for hours about this. <laughs> so um if somebody was listening now and they they know they've got something going on, um, whether it be a, a you know an anxiety thing or whether it be a physical thing or whatever, and they're thinking this sounds like the thing for me, what what is the process that you take? I mean, I know you said that you felt pretty much healed within one session, but what, what is the sort of thing that you offer out to new clients that want to tackle whatever it is that's going on for them? So I always have two different options. I have one, which is the theta healing, which we just primarily focus on me doing the healing on you. Then I also have more of the coaching program, which teaches you how to do this healing yourself, because what I want to be able to give everybody is you can do this yourself. You can self heal. You can manifest on demand. You can transform your life. You just have to know how to balance out that subconscious and that conscious work, right? It's in, in my coaching program, it's three months of that rebalancing and then theta healing. It's more of the one on one on one or one-off kind of sessions, depending on how much you want the healing being done. But it's an asking yourself if you are willing to let go of everything that you used to know or were comfortable with in order to find your purpose, to self-heal and to transform your life. Because if the answer is no, then no matter what healing is done, whether it is with me, with somebody else, Reiki, acupuncture, 
there's that resistance. So it's not actually going to be done. If you're open to the discomfort, because change, all this change, as we can see in the past two years, has created so much discomfort. If you are okay with that discomfort, then let's work together because that is how you know you're going to be changing. Your body is now saying, I'm ready to let go of the old and embody the new. And that discomfort is just part of the fermentation period of alchemy where you have to take that step, right? And you have that choice. Do I go back or do I go forward, right? So it's an asking that one question, am I ready to dismantle my life? Am I ready to be uncomfortable? Am I ready to let go even if it is it feels potentially unsafe because that is, it's going to feel unsafe because your survival self has created this beautiful comfort zone for you for however many years until you've come to this point. Yeah. So it's in being able to do the uncomfortable. That's the best way I can tell anybody who's listening. If you know you're ready and wanting to and willing, capable and able to do this work, are you ready to be uncomfortable? Yeah, big time. Um... Yeah, I can relate to that. That was when I started my acupuncture. It was a similar conversation. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So how can people, if, you know, if this really resonates for, for people, how do they find you? Uh, you can find me at my website at www.emspath.com. I'm also on social media at ems underscore P-A-T-H. I have a YouTube channel, which you can find me. I'm all under the same name, TikTok. I have my own podcast as well, Awaken the Wisdom Within. You can find me on all the social media platforms, trying to get this message out there about Theta Healing and reprogramming. And yeah, that's where you can find me. Perfect. Well, I'll, I'll obviously put all the links in uh, the mm -hmm. show notes. Um, and I like to end with some pearls of wisdom or anything you feel called to share to sort of close off what would that like to, what would you like that to be hmm. Hmm. so for everybody who is listening in the process of alchemizing your life in the process of making those shifts and changes that will allow you to transform and heal is to ask yourself this one question which is fear or love and ask that before you do anything and it will always guide you to if you choose love it will guide you to that path of your highest and greatest good thank you that's quite relevant for me right now <laughs> maybe that's why creator told me to say it it was meant for you <laughs> um yeah it is so um well thank you so much emily it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you i love i love what you're doing um, we need more of you out there doing this kind of work. Um, you know, we all do a similar thing, I guess, in terms of coach, because I'm a coach. Um, I do Reiki, so but not not quite to your energetic, you know, levels. Um, but I, you know, was talking to you. I'm just like that. The work I do, I feel like I should be doing more of what you're doing. That you know, and I keep getting that sense. So maybe maybe at one point I will. Um, but yes, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. And uh, thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you so much. I truly enjoy this experience and sharing it with you. Me too. Thank you.